Today I'm going to be taking you through ways that I love to train power in training that aren't the Olympic weightlifting movements. I like to utilize Olympic weightlifting as part of my training, but that's a really high skill movement that often requires personalized coaching and someone to work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you develop the skills and form needed for that. And we don't all have the time or desire to do that, but you should be training power as part of your normal training and routine. So power training is going to be maximal all-out force output type training that is slightly different than strength. When we think about strength and power, they're on a continuum where the more force that you're generating, the less weight it's going to be. And the more strength or force that you're needing to move a heavy weight, the less powerful it's going to be. And we kind of have this speed strength right here in the middle. When we're doing this in the gym, we want to think about doing things that we're moving fast or moving weight efficiently from point A to point B. With Olympic weightlifting, you often see this done with a snatch or the clean and jerk, but we can mimic these things with dumbbells and or use other forms of power training as part of our normal training routine. First, when you are programming your workouts and you are including power training, you wanna include that between your warm up and your main heavy barbell sets. Power training is very fatiguing and requires a lot of our central nervous system's output in order to drive rapid force output for us to move weight or our bodies from point A to point B. So you're going to be doing this before you do your squats, your deadlifts, your bench, your press, whatever your main strength training for the day is, you'll wanna do your power before that. When you're thinking about programming your power movements, you wanna think about programming maybe three to five sets of anywhere from three to maybe five reps of these movements at heavy loads or with rapid acceleration in your body while moving either the weight or your body a certain distance as fast as you can. Now, don't get me wrong, fast does not mean sloppy or bad form. We still wanna make sure we're focusing on these things, but we wanna just make sure that we are moving fast and powerfully. It's not like a grind out rep of a heavy squat or a last effort bicep curl at the top of a final set to failure. These are rapid acceleration. Because of this, a lot of people think that they're not loading these things heavy enough or they're not fatiguing enough and they need to do it for a bunch of reps and sets in order to get the benefit of it. We're thinking of like people doing box jumps in the middle of a Metcon. That is different from what we're doing here today. When we're doing power training, we're trying to train to be explosive. And this is requiring a lot of rapid force output from our muscle, which we can only do for a small number of reps with adequate rest in between. So you don't wanna go and do three sets of 15 box squats with 30 seconds of rest between. That is not what we're talking about here today. Again, we're thinking about three to five sets of somewhere between one, three, or five reps. And doing that for maximum power output and then resting a minute or a minute and a half or even two minutes in between these so we can recover just like we would with a strength training output that we're looking at in our lifting sessions. Now, let's dive into some of my favorite ways to do this in your training. So first, one of my favorite ways to train power output in your training is doing the Olympic weightlifting movements with just dumbbell variants of them. So instead of doing the barbell setup, it's just training those similar movement patterns, that triple extension that we're looking for in the Olympic weightlifting, but doing it with just dumbbells so we can kind of still practice that power and drive of the weight without the technicality of doing a bunch of weight overhead. So when we're thinking about a dumbbell snatch or a dumbbell clean or a lot of these things, what we first want to think about is triple extension. So a great way to practice this is to just just simply do a squat jump where you're reaching at the top. And this itself could be a power movement. Squat jumps, when not done in the fit we jump around way, can be a really great way to train power output. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is just think of getting into that deep squat and then reaching up into the sky. You wanna think about your, your knees straightening, your hips straightening, and then you extending up into the air. That force is generating up your body and up through the tips of your fingers into the air. That's what you wanna think about when you're thinking about moving that weight for the dumbbell variations that we're gonna go through in a second here. But also when you're doing plyometrics, you're thinking of that power generation coming up your body and out through you. So again, jump squats are a great place to start with this. Getting into that deep squat and extending up in reaching, you could do a few of those as power training to ease yourself in to this. So let's get into dumbbell power snatches, one of my favorite variations of all time. So I've got my dumbbell here and you can do power or full variations of these. I'll show you both. But I really like the power variants because it allows you to train the power output, that triple extension of the move, getting that weight overhead, training that power generation without kind of the clunkiness that can often come with getting in to that squat position, which is often one of the bigger limiting factors, especially with snatches when we're doing them with the barbell with people. So first I've got my dumbbell snatch here. You're gonna start at the floor and you're gonna think about carrying that weight up to your hip. And then when you get to that hip, that triple extension, that pop, 
and getting it up overhead as fast and as powerful as you can. So let's do that in full speed. So you can see I'm pulling it up. My knees are straightening out. I'm getting to that hip, my arms nice and long, and then I'm driving with all that force at my hip to get that up. And I have a slight knee bend to catch it at the top, but we're not getting up and underneath it like this. All right, let's do that again. So again, the reason that I like the power variants of these rather than the full range of motion ones is because it just allows you to train specifically that power output type component of this without having to worry about getting your hips under and getting into that deep squat part of the motion. But if you would like to do that, this is what that would look like. All right, the next move I love is going to be the dumbbell power clean and or dumbbell clean and press or push press. All these are segmented variations of the clean and jerk that you might see in traditional Olympic weightlifting, but done in their individual components and with the dumbbell. So first let's start with the power clean. So similar to that to the snatch, you're gonna start from the floor and instead of bringing it to your hips up to your overhead, you're gonna be simply bringing it to your shoulders. This might be a little bit more accessible for many of you who aren't comfortable with doing that overhead position right now and just getting it to your shoulder and catching it there. So as you can see, I'm thinking about that same triple extension. We're coming off the floor. We're getting it to our hips, keeping our arms nice and long, and then rapidly using all that force that we're generating from the floor up to bring it up to our shoulders. So something I want you guys to notice when I'm doing these is that my feet are kind of jumping and hopping off the ground. That is the power coming up through my body. I'm not intentionally jumping in the sense of like, I'm going like this, but I'm pulling and that force is going to feel like a jump. That's why we wanted to practice and start with that triple extension high reach there. Now again, if you wanna do the full squat variation of that, it's going to be the same thing, but you're going to catch in the squat position like so. All right, next is going to be the push press or the push jerk with just the dumbbells. We can do this with just one dumbbell or we can do it with two dumbbells overhead. I really like this variation, especially for using it to train some overhead pressing and drive. It can also kind of help translate into some of our strength output moves overhead, which a lot of people, especially females, tend to struggle with. So when we are thinking about linking this up, you can do the power clean into this press, but let's start with the press for now. So I'm gonna bring that weight up to my shoulder. You're probably gonna have one arm out in front of you or somewhere to the side of you to kind of balance and offset this. And you're going to do a small dip with your knees. We're not squatting down and then driving up. We're just doing a small dip. Just think about a slight bend in your knees, trying to keep your torso as upright and vertical. You don't wanna be leaning forward or having your chest go forward. You wanna think about if there's a rigid board in front of you and staying in a straight line like this. So you're like this and driving that force output up through that dumbbell from your shoulder. Again. And then you can switch sides. I have my microphone, so this might not be so great. And again, you wanna think about having that rigid, stiff midline there, bracing that core, a small dip, and drive. A small dip, and drive. Now you can do the same thing with two dumbbells at your shoulders, doing a dual dumbbell press, like so. And from the side. Now there isn't anything wrong with doing one or either of those. They're just different variations of it that you can do with using the dumbbell. They both can be utilized as part of your training. Next, we can link together that power clean that we did with that push press to kind of mimic a clean and jerk with a single dumbbell in this movement. Okay. 
as you guys can see here, same thing we've been focusing on, pulling that up to our waist, popping up to our hips, and then I'm pausing and resetting, and then going up into that drive and resetting, coming back down, and then switching arms and resetting again. It's essentially taking the two movements, pausing to collect to the top and stringing them together. So you're doing kind of that clean and jerk variation that you might do in the actual barbell Olympic weightlifting movements, but doing it simply with one dumbbell and getting up overhead. Next is a variation that I really like to use with contrast training. So you're going between either a squat pattern or a step up type pattern variation, and then moving into this powerful explosive thing back to back in a superset. I really like utilizing these to emphasize extra power training to co alongside strength training. It's a lot less technical than that of the dumbbell clean and jerk or the dumbbell snatch, but also adds a little bit of weight and resistance and forcing more power generation and force output than your traditional triple extension or squat jump. So again, if you remember, we did our squat jumps before and we came up and put our arms extended through the air. This is gonna be very similar to if you're just doing your traditional squat jump, but instead of just squatting with just your body weight, which could be a great place to start if you are beginner and new to this, you're adding a little bit of resistance. So you're getting two dumbbells down at your sides and you're trying to jump as high as you possibly can with those weights. These are jump squats. Now you'll notice these are 15 pounds and it doesn't need to be that heavy. You can do something with this and have it be five, 10, 15 pounds, or even work yourself up or down in weight as you progress across a block to either work on increasing the weight that you're using while you're doing these or decreasing it as you're trying to increase your force output. It just kind of depends on your goal of the training there. You can do these weighted with a barbell on your back. For some people that might feel too technical. So I love the dumbbell variation as a way to add that in to your training while keeping it super simple and or even removing more technicality that you're seeing even in the dumbbell variations of the clean and jerk for the Olympic weightlifting movements. And there you have it. There are three ways to train power in your training that aren't the Olympic barbell weightlifting movements, but still allow you to train those components within your training without having to have the skill to do something as advanced as that. There's a ton of other ways to train power within your training. These are just a few examples or ways that you can mimic the barbell Olympic weightlifting movements within your training to get similar adaptations while doing power and speed under load. I hope you found this video super insightful. If you did, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and leave me a comment below and let me know what you learned and what you'd like to see in the next video. I think power training is severely underrated and a lot of people actually skip this and neglect this altogether and go straight for strength training in the gym. There's a lot of benefits to training for power and plyometrics, which we'll cover in another video, especially for having a well-rounded athletic base, whether you're a runner Runner, a weightlifter, or just someone who's training for general health and longevity, we want to make sure we have these components in our training all of the time, all of the seasons that we're in. So I hope you enjoy this. Add them to your next weight training session and let me know how it goes below.